Good morning, my Real News Media TV family. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning, and I'm wishing for everyone a wonderful and a productive day. And in the news this morning for December 8, 2023, mother allegedly throws a baby girl to death during argument with her spouse in St. James. A five-month old girl is dead while her mother is facing charges in a suspected case of infanticide. According to the St. James Police, the baby was allegedly thrown from the third story of a concrete resident in the Marathon community on Wednesday evening. It is further alleged that the child's parents were engaged in a heated argument where the father refused to discuss their relationship. The news understands that it was during this time that the child was allegedly thrown from a roof by her mother who then went to the second floor to consume bleach before leaping from the building. The incident was reportedly witnessed by the woman's eight-year-old daughter and an alarm was raised. Both the mother and the infant were urgently taken to the Falmouth Hospital. The child was later transferred to the Conwell Regional Hospital due to the severity of her injuries, which included significant trauma to the side of her head, said the police. The infant was pronounced dead at the Conwell Regional Hospital on Thursday afternoon. Police investigations continue as the community seeks to come to terms with this tragic event. Mental health professionals have been called in to support the affected family and the residents, the police added. Man killed after alleged confrontation with the police in Westmoreland. A man was shot and killed in an alleged confrontation with the police and a firearm seized in Little London, Westmoreland on Thursday. The identity of the deceased is not yet known. According to the police, the incident happened just before 1 p.m. His death comes just days after the police reassured the citizens and the business owners in Little London and the Negril that they were ramping up assets in the space following a spate of robberies and murders. It's only a matter of time before we crush this latest surge, which is being committed by greedy reckless terrorists who are hell-bent on creating mayhem. I want to assure the residents and the citizens of Westmoreland that we will not rest until this is accomplished, said the Deputy Superintendent of Police in charge of operations in the Westmoreland Police Division, Adrian Hamilton, last week. It is part of the intensified operational activities in the Negril and the Little London space, DSP Hamilton told the news. According to Hamilton, an illegal firearm was seized from the deceased person. The Independent Commission of Investigations has reportedly launched an investigation into the matter. Five operators arrested after Transport Authority uncovers a fake badges. The Transport Authority says arising from intensified road operations, a number of fraudulent badges have been uncovered. According to the authority, the investigations which are ongoing have so far resulted in five operators being arrested and charged while two are being interrogated. Managing Director of the Transport Authority, Ralston Smith, said the authority will continue to take swift and decisive action against the perpetrators of this crime in order to curtail this activity and avoid any possible threat to the safety of the commuting public. Smith stressed that the authority has the technology to detect whether a badge is authentic. He is therefore encouraging operators to resist the temptation from unscrupulous persons who are producing these effect badges. Under sections 124, 126, and 127 of the Road Traffic Regulations and the section 22 of the Road Traffic Taxes and the Contractor Cars Regulation, the wearing of driver-conductor badges is a prerequisite for operating public passenger vehicles. The authority uses this medium to remind the members of the public that badges to operate in the sector can only be obtained by applying to the authority, completing the training and practicing a clean record, a statement from the authority said on Thursday. The Transport Authority is therefore reminding commuters to report to suspicious incidents or infractions by calling toll-free 1-888-991-5687 or 876-926-8912 or WhatsApp images or videos to 876-551-8196 or 876-279-8515. All complaints should include the license plate numbers, the routes for the vehicles, or the location of the incident. Commuters may also download the Drive Safe Jamaica and the TravelPal apps from the Google Play or App Stores to submit their complaints, it added. 
Meanwhile, the authority is urging public passenger vehicle operators to use the legitimate means to apply for and to collect their badges. Body found in Petersfield, Westmoreland. The body of a man was found in Petersfield, Westmoreland on Thursday morning. He has been identified as a 33-year-old Dwayne Williams, otherwise called a monkey man, of Pulentilene in the community. His upper body was discovered to have multiple stab and chop wounds, the police said. According to the police, Williams was last seen around 10.15 p.m. Wednesday. Reports are that residents stumbled upon his body about 8.30 Thursday morning and summoned the police. The now deceased was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. Investigations are ongoing. Two women held with U.S. currency and credit cards in Montego Bay arrested. Two men who were reportedly found in possession of United States credit cards and the U.S. $400 were arrested Thursday morning at the Sanctuary International Airport in Montego Bay, St. James, by members of the Lottery Scam Task Force. The men have been identified as a 27-year-old high-wind fuller of Haddington Kinloss Trelawney and a 32-year-old Odin Lawson, a lifeguard of jungles, also in the parish. Reports are that between the hours of 6 a.m. and 8 a.m., an operation was conducted at the airport where the two men were reported as seen acting in a suspicious manner. A police report stated that the men were observed withdrawing money at an automated teller machine which dispenses U.S. currency only. The men were searched and were found with U.S. credit cards bearing the names of people living overseas along with U.S. $400 and ATM receipts showing the withdrawal. They were arrested and charged for the offense of possession of an access device. Omar Collymore accused of wife's murder to stand the trial in February 2024. The trial of Omar Collymore, the man accused of arranging the murder of his wife, 32-year-old Simone Campbell Collymore, and the 36-year-old taxi operator, Winston Watson, in 2018, is scheduled to begin on February 12 next year. The trial is expected to last 15 days. This was disclosed Thursday afternoon when Mr. Collymore and his co-accused Corey Jonas, Shaquille Edwards, Michael Adams, and Duane Pink appeared in the Home Circuit Court. They are to reappear in the Home Circuit Court on February 7 for the continuation of a trial readiness hearing. The accused men were subsequently remanded. Meanwhile, Mr. Adams and his attorney, C.J. Mitchell, are to return to court on January 11 to address the concerns about his medical condition. It was reported that on January 2, 2018, Mr. Watson was transporting Mrs. Campbell Collymore home when gunmen opened a fire on the vehicle along Stanley Terrace in Red Hills, St. Andrew. Mr. Collymore was arrested at the Norman Manley International Airport a day before his wife's funeral. In March 2021, one of his co-accused, 24-year-old Wade Blackwood, was sentenced to life imprisonment after pleading guilty to killing Mrs. Campbell Collymore and Mr. Watson. UHWI board dissolved a fallen meeting with Health Minister. The Minister of Health and Wellness says the board of the University Hospital of the West Indies has been dissolved following a meeting Thursday with Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton. The Health Ministry says Board Chairman Win Chai Chong submitted his resignation effective on Monday, December 4. Dr. Tufton said this resignation follows a series of discussions on the strategic direction of the hospital and the deliberations on the way forward for critical projects which were being stymied by a range of factors. The chairman did tender his resignation, but this came as a result of a number of conversations that we've had, a series of conversations around a number of issues related to functioning of the board, the strategic direction, and some of the things that we wanted to achieve, which were being stymied by a range of factors. So that resignation came out of that. Now, I commend him for the role he has played, for the leadership that he brought during the period of time. But the truth is that there were some issues that were unresolved and appeared to have become almost chronic in terms of the resolution. He said a meeting was convened Thursday with the Board of Management to review the way forward. Arising from the meeting, the decision was taken to dissolve the current Board of Management. The meeting also agreed that key strategic actions will need to be taken to realign the organization. 
These included the recruitment and appointment of a new chief executive officer and the reinstitution of a new board of management to improve the governance, management and operational efficiency of the hospital. JAS calls for restructuring of PC banks to better serve farmers. The Jamaica Agricultural Society is calling for a restructuring of PC banks to better serve the interest of farmers. The country's PC bank network has financed Jamaica's small farmers for more than 112 years. In recent years, the banks have been dogged by claims of mismanagement. Manager of Training, Marketing and the Projects at the JAS, Janet Pullen, said the banks have moved away from their original intent. Mrs. Pullen lamented that the PC banks have become more commercialized in their approach, but are also now few and far between. When I was growing, every community literally had a PC bank. And what that offered to the management and the board members was that 90% of the membership were people of the community and everybody knew everybody. So when they go to the bank, there were no great hesitation. Or Mr. Clark would say, no, man, your history too bad, you do this, you do that. No, the PC banks, you have to search to find a PC bank. And that is what is causing some of the great issues. I'm not knocking what it is, but I'm saying that if the PC bank is to become effective and to do what its original plan is, we have got to look at where they were, where they are now, and where we really want them to be.